you white guy. Nice hat. <laughs> nice hat. Did you wear that for me? Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, so you claim Palace merchandise as well? Nah, that's 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 P Phone. Oh, okay. Paul Rupert Coimer. You know, we 210 baby, so Pasadena. So what kind of history do you guys have? I met, I met the homie over the phone when he first come home. This is my first time meeting him in person. Okay. But you know, his his reputation speaks for itself. You know, when you got certain homies that then did a lot of time, uh -huh. they um and did the type of time he did. They um <clears throat> they keep the doors open for the homies to come behind them. You know what I'm saying? It's like an old saying from back in the days. It's dues and deaths to, do to those before us. We must remain the strongest soldier for the ones that follow. The mission is to move forward. To get there means not to know how far to go. And when certain homies is in there, he the type of homie that yeah, he went in there to do his time, but whatever that date was, if he made it to it, he made it to it. He was going, he wasn't factoring in, I'm trying to make this date, so this ain't gonna happen. So when I look up on my phone, and I got like Crips that I've been knowing for decades, texting me saying, yo, your man Chauncey, he one of them. I ain't even asking, I ain't doing no resume check on the homie. Out of respect that this the homie father, and all the PDLs I know is like, Hey, that's the big homie. But when is just voluntarily texting me these things and naming spots and locations and events, and and it's like, you know, because a lot of homies that didn't walk that type of walk, and I can't even claim to walk that type of walk because I didn't do the type of time the homie did. Mm. The homie got damn near dub plus in collectively, right? And that's just feds in state. Ain't no telling how much YA time you might have did, right? So, you know, I got like a dime overall. But he didn't bend to both feds and CDC, right? So wherever he's went, it's always been the same story. You know what I'm saying? They say he's a storm. Mm. You know, you're going to know he's on the yard. So, you know, when you're dealing with that and seeing him come home the way he came home, the nephew, you know what I'm saying? And, and... And I got this saying, if your son is named after you, your little or baby or tiny, when it comes to some game, I'm going to look at you a little different. Because coming from our era, we know what we went through, and we don't want none of that shit. We don't want to even envision our son in a chain or uh, on a cage or being stripped down or zip tied on a yard because of a rod because of the skin of the, the color of his skin so me nephew right and and i didn't know nothing about his dad at the time when we met right, yeah, right. so just me nephew his energy was so good because i raised my son the same way be honorable be respectful but be a man but you ain't got to be part of this shit. Mm -hmm. so when the first time you put me on the phone with pops yeah, I, and i'm talking to him right, right when he touched him. yeah yeah when i'm talking to him right i hear it i hear the language i hear the pain I hear the struggle and I hear his gangster, right? And then to sit back and watch him. I watch him every day on the internet. I went sit back and see what he doing and watching him and hear what his goals are. You know, hear what he want to do, right? And see his work ethic in it and know that his baby boy was here and able to open some doors when he come home and to see y'all bond because a lot of a lot of fathers and sons get into it oh yeah For they sure. come home sure. and the son be like man i'm this and he like yeah. look little nigga let me holler at nah, you I nigga, daddy. you know what i'm saying yeah. like uh be in my dm every day like man listen bro you make me want to hit my pops we ain't been cool no this minute. real shit. Mm -hmm. like, so to sit here like, and yeah, watch yeah, it more than the music and you know you got to remember i laugh about it uh, right because the homie be doing that? That's that era. That made, like the other day. <laughs> this in the living room. <laughs> oh, God. Program. This program in the living room doing the clap push up. Oh but he watching his video yeah, on yeah. the big screen, right? Yeah, sure. So what he then did was he's a big inspiration to niggas behind their walls. And not only y'all two, right, the way y'all father-son is, yeah. It's, bro, to see you moving around, no bro, on the floor at the game in uh -huh. New York, just to see this as a, you know, coming from where I fuck come from, because my first five years, I don't know about you, bro. My son, first five years of his life, I was gone, and all the gangster shit I was doing in the joint, 
I still felt like a because I wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? I missed his first steps. Like I wasn't there. Like I caught home and hit him in the back and I couldn't do nothing. And a lot of that I took out on the way, pal, or just took out on the if I was one of them days, right? So my question to you is like, bro, you did a lot of time, right? What made you what made you say this time when I come home, I'm gonna lock in with my baby boy, lock in with my son. Cause I knew you had goals. You wanted to chase on the rap, and he was, you know, he the, he he the top. He one of our top producers right now, just in the game, right? He the only one. He'd tell you, cause I got a reputation when it come time to doing business, uh, like, cause you know I pay all my bills independent. Neff, what I call and tell you, what you want? Wow, we ran it up for sure. I said, what you want, Neff? Uh, you gave me a number. I ran it. Uh, you know, I still be handling that business like our old business. Like, uh, hold on. I'm not finna pay you that. I'm gonna give you this. But when it come to Neff, I was I was I, I was glad to pay him. Right. He did a lot of work on games last album. Like I was glad to pay him. What you want? I paid you first. Yeah, no, for sure. You got no, paid you first out of anybody, oh, right? So how did it feel, bro? To like come home and and see see your son locked in and be able to fall in line to be able to Can't chase your dreams through something he was already doing i mean it's, it's a blessing bro i just uh just i just got burnt out on the, on the on everything my nigga like the politics the whole and uh i just told myself i'm gonna isolate myself my nigga, and around this you know what i'm saying my grandson my son my daughter yeah you know what i'm saying that both that's my cell now I don't got no urge to go out and trick and do all this. Shit. You know what I'm saying? We you got 100 songs in eight months. You no, know, literally. When I'm sitting up like this, my like in the pile of money, then I can have fun. When I can't count it, when I can spend my money and I can't count it, my then I can go have fun. On me. Other than that, I'm gonna be out there trying to get it. So I'm gonna stay in the booth till I get it, blood on me. No, that's real shit. That's real shit. Uh, I'm, so my question for you is, is this something like like invigorate, reinvigorating your dad's career and like you know really pushing him as an artist? It, would you say that that was something that you always wanted to do, or you kind of thought about, or was it something where you just recognized that he had like a really unique talent? Yeah, nah, man. He uh, he came home around a time when I really start even doing beats, which mm -hmm. was when I was like seventeen type. Shit, you know what I mean? Like sixteen, seventeen. Like oh, from, so we coming from, the, from the time I was three, though. Got you. He got locked up when I was three and got out around you know when I was like seventeen and just like we always talked about the shit, even them, them times like we worked on music back then just doing ideas. I obviously was early in my career, so I couldn't really make no real moves. 